Forza Horizon 4 dropped a few weeks ago, and I've been playing it pretty much non-stop, but there's something weird going on. While the game's roster of nearly 450 cars is all well and good, there's one glaring brand omission. To the dismay of fans all over the world, Toyota decided they didn't want their cars in Forza Horizon. This week on Wheelhouse, we're going to find out why. I think for a lot of us, video games are a huge reason we're into cars. Some of my favorite cars to this day are ones that I remember driving with a controller. The Evo 6 in Gran Turismo 2, the Ferrari 512 in Cruisin' USA, the Team Oreca Viper in Gran Turismo 3, the Dodge Charger in Midnight Club 3, the list goes on. Racing games are many people's first tiny step into the car world. Also, big shout out to Midnight Club 3, best soundtrack of all time, if you know, you know. But before we talk about Toyota, we need a little context. Racing games have come a long, long way. The first racer ever was called Grand Track 10 by Atari, released in 1974. This was before gaming consoles. You actually had to go out into the real world and play it at an arcade. I know, it's terrifying. They didn't even have Discord back then. The cabinet itself weighed around 400 pounds and featured a real steering wheel and gear shifter, pretty ahead of its time for the mid 70s. Pole position featured a somewhat accurate version of Fuji Speedway over in Japan. What really set pole position apart was the third person view behind the car, which would be the standard to this day. Because the game inspired so many imitators, many video game historians call pole position one of the most influential video games ever made. One of the first games to use a licensed vehicle was Outrun, developed by Sega in 1986. And this is where car brands started seeing the possibilities of linking the virtual world to the real one. Players drove a Ferrari Testarossa Spider, which for the time looked amazingly realistic, and was definitely a Ferrari because it had a pixelated prancing horse badge on the back. The game's designer, Yu Suzuki, said he drew a lot of inspiration for Outrun from a long trip to Europe where he just drove around for two weeks. That sounds nice. <laughs> The game was a huge hit and inspired another Japanese company to make their own game chock full of real world cars. In the early 90s, Polly's Entertainment was a development group within Sony focused on making games for the company's latest home entertainment system, the PlayStation. They didn't call it the PlayStation 1 because they didn't know there were going to be three more. Kind of like how people didn't know there was going to be a World War II and that the Great War was going to last more than two weeks. Anyway. Polly's had released two games in their Motor Tune Grand Prix series, a kart racer that took a lot of inspiration from the Mario Kart series, and what I can only guess were some seriously righteous hallucinogens. In spite of the strangeness, critics praised the kart's handling because they felt a little more real than what people were used to. It turns out, Polly's was about to give people more of that feeling. A lot more. In 1997, Polly's Entertainment released the game that would forever change the course of the company and racing game history as a whole. Gran Turismo was in development for five years and was a huge hit when it finally released. Critics and players alike praised Gran Turismo for its hyper-realistic graphics, driving physics, and stacked real-life car roster. Gran Turismo featured 140 cars from 11 manufacturers. That's really impressive when you think about it. Even today, large companies don't really come together on a lot of things unless they own each other. And here's this little game published by Sony with tons of real cars people actually know. That probably felt a little ahead of its time for everyone involved. In 16 years, Gran Turismo 1 sold nearly 11 million copies, making it the best-selling original PlayStation game ever made. And that's just the first installment. But don't think they didn't have any competition. Electronic Arts had released the Need for Speed for the Panasonic 3DO in 1994, which also featured real-world handling. But the car roster was tiny by comparison to Gran Turismo's. However, the Need for Speed series had something Gran Turismo didn't. Cops. In the head-to-head -head mode, players didn't just have to beat the other driver, they also had to dodge traffic, as well as get away from 5-0. Players freaking loved this, and the police became a staple for the Need for Speed series. But the fuzz wasn't the only thing Need for Speed had over Gran Turismo. Need for Speed also had Porsche. So the way licensing works for video games is that developers and publishers have to pay companies to use their likenesses and logos inside the game, otherwise you're probably going to get sued. When EA was developing Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed, they very wisely worded the contract so they would be the sole developers with the right to use Porsche branding in their games. If you wanted to drive a Porsche from your couch, 
you needed to buy Need for Speed. While this might have been a big disadvantage for other racing games, there were some unexpected benefits for other brands. RUF, or Roof? Roof? I'll say Roof. Who let the dogs out? Roof? Roof, Roof, Roof. Roof was a German auto manufacturer that had been building their own Porsche-inspired sports cars since the mid 70s. At first, the company would tune up Porsche 911s and then sell them. But then they started buying what are called bodies in white, direct from Porsche. These are assembled chassis without any other components on board. Roof would then take these bodies in white and finish the cars with parts of their own design. This officially made Roof its own manufacturer in the eyes of the German government, completely independent from Porsche. Soon after the EA Porsche deal, developers, including Polyphony Digital, figured out how they can get cars that looked like Porsches in their game without actually having Porsches in their games. See where this is going? They might not have been real Porsches, but they looked the part. And for 95% of players, myself included, that was good enough for them. Because of EA's exclusive deal with Porsche, gamers around the world know who Roof is. Fortunately for us, and maybe unfortunately for Roof, EA's deal with Porsche expired in 2016, and pretty much immediately, Porsches were showing up in games like Forza, Gran Turismo, and Assetto Corsa. And like that, developers no longer needed the Roof workaround. So, Toyota, what's going on with them? Like I said at the beginning, they recently and quite abruptly stopped letting studios use their cars in games. Gaming site Kotaku reported on an editorial in a Japanese newspaper connecting the slide in Japan's car sales to the rise of video games. The editorial even quotes a Toyota exec as saying, home game machines are no good. Playing something that realistic makes the needs for cars disappear. I'm sorry, what? If anything, driving a virtual Toyota in Forza would make me want a real Toyota even more. So are there any other hints? There's been some speculation that since Toyota only has one sports car in their lineup, the 86, that they don't feel the product placement is worth it. On top of that, most every other Toyota people want in their games are old models like the MR2, Celica, the AE86, and the Supra. Toyota might feel that if all the cars gamers see are old, that gamers might think the Toyota brand has fallen off, and that's not a good look. As a counterpoint though, there are plenty of brands with mostly old lineups in racing games, so that argument doesn't really work for me. I think it's worth remembering that while it might not make sense for us fans, Toyota doesn't have any obligation to put their cars in our games. Big companies make weird decisions all the time, and they don't have to tell us why. So for now, it remains a mystery. And it's possible that Toyota will miss out on gaining some younger fans. But Toyota, I swear to God, the new Supra isn't in Forza next year after the launch. We're all gonna riot. We know where you live. Hey, we have a subreddit on Reddit now. I'm a moderator, r slash donut media. Come check it out, come subscribe. We look at the weird car stories that affect you every week here on Wheelhouse, so hit that yellow subscribe button right there. I mentioned the AE86. Check out this episode of Up to Speed on it. Check out this episode of Wheelhouse. Be nice, I'll see you next time.